The hardest part for me when learning attributes and reflection was trying to think of scenarios where I'd ever want to use it. And so I think it's good to show you some practical examples. I've done that in previous videos. I want to show you some more practical examples of attributes and reflections so that you can kind of see, oh yeah, I can see when I would totally use this and when it's needed. It's Attributes and reflection are not the end-all tool. In fact, there's speed issues. Reflections considered slow. How slow? Do some profiling to figure out. But uh, if you need it, it's certainly there, and uh, let's get going. Make another class. I'll call it person. I believe I've made this class before. Say string, first name, get set, string, last name, get set, and let's just do int age, get, oops, get set, and that should be good. I forgot to put public on these, so alt, drag my mouse down, type public, and oops, we're done. Alright, let's make a person var. Uh, me, it's new person. And I'll say my first name naturally would be myself. And last name would naturally be myself. And my age would naturally be an age I'm not really, but uh, we can lie about it, sure. And I want to serialize this instance of an object, which means I want to uh, convert it to bits and bytes that I could save to the hard drive and then close my computer down or close my application down, open it back up and read this object back in. Or I could serialize it to the network. I think the best analogy I have for this is Willy Wonka. If you watch Willy Wonka, there's that part where they have this camera and it takes a picture of the chocolate bar and and all of a sudden this big huge chocolate bar turns into these bits and bytes and these dit 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 dit, uh, speckles at the top of the screen and they're being serialized over to the TV and then they show up on the TV and it's just epic chocolate bar because you've smashed all this chocolateness in, into one bar. That's what we're doing here. We're going to take this person, remember the little boy in Willy Wonka, he gets up and the camera takes a picture of him and serializes him over to the TV. Same idea here, we're going to serialize this, but we're going to serialize it to uh, XML. I'm going to use WCF's data contract serializer. If you don't know WCF, don't stress it. This is pretty simple. I had to add a reference earlier to system.runtime.serialization to make this happen. So let me show you how we're going to do this. I am going to first add some WCF attributes to this. I have to say data contract control dot using system.runtime.serialization and then these are data members data member uh, control L, control V, control V, control V I'm not going to get into all the details of SOA and WCF and contracts. Let me break this down to you really easy. This just says, hey, you know what, we can serialize this. Hey, when you serialize it, include this. Hey, when you serialize it, include this. Hey, when you serialize it, include this. Remember, these attributes sit here and do nothing until something looks at them and decides to act upon that. So let's do just that. I'm going to say var... Uh, formatter gets new data contract. Is it serializer? Oh, I should call it serializer. Look at me um, mixing old serialization terms with new ones. Notice I have to pass the type here. Uh, the type is going to be person. I'm going to serialize one of these. So type of person. I could have certainly said though me dot get type and gone off the runtime type object. Either one. Serializer. And then I need a stream. I need a place to save this out to. Generally, this would be a file, or it could be some sort of network stream. That's what WCF's all about, is sending sending these objects over the network. I don't want to do that. I'm going to serialize it back out to RAM, just so I can see the end result. So I'm going to say uh, var stream. It's new memory memory stream, meaning please save it out of memory. Control dot there using system.io stream dot write object or not write object, sorry. Serializer, please write this object. Uh, wants a stream to write it out to, saying I could pass a file stream, network stream, memory stream, whatever stream I want to. Save it out to memory 
And uh, the graph, it's kind of interesting they call this graph because uh, this is a simple object, right? But it could have like, I don't know, I don't know a house. Maybe I have a house object and it's my house. And so all of a sudden I have an object that has a reference to an object. object or maybe the house object has several more references deep. And so all of a sudden you get this kind of tree or graph. If I drew it out for you, it would be a person who has a reference to a house. Maybe house has... A reference to a list of, I don't know, appliances and that kind of thing. I'm totally winging this, but you get the idea. And, and person has a reference to other people. Maybe it's grandma, and grandma has a house. And then all of a sudden we have this graph-looking thing. That's why they call it graph. No big deal. We have a simple little person object. So let's just say, hey, um, write me out to the memory stream. And then to look at what actually was sent to the stream, if you want to learn about file I.O., go watch the videos on that. But essentially, I, I want I want to see what what XML was produced in the stream. So I have to say, hey stream, I know that somebody just wrote a bunch of bytes out to you. Could you uh, seek your pointer back to the beginning? It's kind of like a typewriter where you grab the handle, drag the handle back to go to the next line, kind of thing. But we're not going to the next line. We're just saying, hey, go to the beginning of the line that I just typed so that I can read in exactly what was, what was written. Then once I have that, I'm going to refer to some code I have here offline. Let me go find it. It took me a sec to come up with this to make sure the output was correct. I'm just going to paste it in there and uh, format it a little bit. Oh, it looks like I called this some RAM instead of stream before, but I'll just replace that with my stream. And you know what? I kind of like the name some RAM, so I'm going to type some RAM control dot rename stream to some RAM and thank you Visual Studio it fixes all of that for me put a semicolon out here and control dot to get the appropriate usings on all these <coughs> let me try to explain what's going on here I'm saying hey some RAM I know underneath you just have an array a byte array underneath there so please give me that byte array and then let's convert that to an ASCII string because I know it's ASCII letters in there and then it looks like I'm replacing the null terminator with nothing. I can't remember why I had to do that. but And then I turn around and say, hey, X element, please parse that. And the only reason I'm doing that with X element, if you watch the linked XML videos, uh, I'm just trying to get X element to format it nice and clean for us. And then I turn around and say, hey, write out the nicely formatted text that X element gave us. So, control F5 and you can see here that the data contract serializer turned our person into some nice, clean XML. I could certainly send this over the network to a Java application, and it wouldn't be hard for someone in the Java world to parse this information and get some data out of it. Here's, It's a person object. The age is 25. Their first name is Jamie. Their last name is King. So on and so forth. So I just serialized or converted the C-sharp object out to XML. And it was actually quite easy, and all I had to say was, hey, uh, allow me to do that and include these things. You'll notice if I take off data member, control L, uh, control F5, you'll see that the last name no longer shows up. All right? It's all up to the data contract serializer to look at these attributes. Again, these attributes do absolutely nothing. But once the data contract serializer comes around and says, oh, you want me to serialize one of these? Okay, let's see what we can write out. Oh, we'll write out that. We'll write out that. We'll write out that. Or maybe we will, won't write out that. Maybe we leave the last name, and then we can even come in here, and there's all sorts of parameters. I can say um, name. Maybe maybe this really isn't the age. Maybe it's the I don't know, name is weight. Wait, and there's reasons why you'd want to do this. Maybe somebody programs something pathetic and we can't change this, but we really want to change this. Control T and Control F5 that. Now look, my my age turned into my weight and um, boy, I'm having uh, some food issues. Maybe that's stones. I remember when I was living in England, stones. If that was stones, I'm weighing a lot, I believe. Anyway, you get the idea. I don't want to go that far with it. Uh, I'm going to bring this all back to what it was. And in the next video, I'm actually going to write a simple serializer that would do the bare bones basics of what a data contract serializer would do. And hopefully you can get the idea of where I'm going. But I'd encourage you, I've shown you what's necessary to do that yourself. So between this video and the next video, try to do it yourself. 
and then come back and see how I do it.